Well, y'all, thank you for coming. This is Josie McDaniel Burkett, who will be signing for us today. <clears throat> and we'll, we'll, you'll hear from the, the men behind me in just a second. As you know, a hurricane is coming our way. It has now been, Florence has now been declared a hurricane. It is no longer a tropical storm. That means it is over 75 miles an hour and getting stronger. There has been a slight change, and that is the hurricane. Now, hurricane is coming to us a little bit slower. That is, it's traveling across the ocean a little slower than it was yesterday in our direction. But on the other hand, it is spinning much faster than it was yesterday. And all estimates are that it'll be spinning even faster by the time it gets to the East Coast, which apparently it is going to do is get to the East Coast. And when it gets here, it's estimated, it may be, this is an estimate, a category four hurricane, which is between 130 and 156 miles an hour. You see the cone there, that is not the area of which the hurricane is expected to affect. That, is, that area there, that cone, that bubble, is the area in which the eye of the hurricane is, to, as of today, based on current temporary information, that is where the eye of the hurricane is expected to be at this time. That is right now, as near as we can forecast. It may change. It may go farther north. It could go farther south. Uh, as you know, the atmospheric conditions that are controlling all of that, but everyone, all the weather forecasters seem to be fairly certain that that is, that's a good forecast for now. Now, tomorrow it may, it may change. But what that means for us in South Carolina is that we, whatever happens, we're going to have a lot of rain and a lot of wind. Even if uh, the hurricane goes farther north and is anticipated in, in this graphic, we're still going to have a lot of water and a lot of wind. So what that means is we need to be prepared. As I mentioned yesterday, the official side of our preparations is being done in a magnificent fashion. We've had practice doing this, as you know, in recent years, and Team South Carolina is on the job. People are being activated. I issued the executive order yesterday that allowed a lot of things to happen and to happen more quickly, and we're moving assets and people to the coast, getting people in place to respond to whatever happens. But I say this, although the official side of this is being done with uh, great precision, great skill, and great speed, it's the unofficial side, that is the, the citizens, that have a, a part that is important to play, and that is make your plans now. If you have met, pretend, assume, presume that a major hurricane is going to hit right smack dab in the middle of South Carolina and may go way in, in shore. Uh, and that means winds and water. So you have to get your medicines ready to go. If you have prescriptions you need filled, better get them filled. If you have relatives who need to be alerted to where you might go or where you can go, tell them, take care of your pets, be sure to lock things up because you may not be coming, you may not be coming home for several days. So that means you may need to take food, you may need to take flashlights depending on where you're gonna go. But there's a lot of information that's available at scmd.org, scemd.org. There's a ample information that provides all that we're discussing. And also, I call your attention again to the South Carolina Hurricane Guide. This is about as good as it gets. It's online at scmd.org. And uh, in some places, you can pick up a hard copy. But if you can't find those, go online. It's got everything you need to know. It's very easy to read, easy to understand, and if we'll all just follow these rules and prepare for this, what is likely going to be a, a strong hit on South Carolina, we don't know how much. We, we, we can't predict for, for sure, but we know we're gonna have a lot of wind and a lot of rain, and remember, it doesn't take much to knock down a telephone pole. A 40 mile an hour wind can knock down a telephone pole, and there goes your power until it can get fixed. So be prepared, uh, be ready. And I need to tell you, I submitted today to President Trump a request for a federal emergency declaration in anticipation of the impact on South Carolina. What that means is we're asking for authorization in advance to make application to get reimbursed for expenses for people, machinery, and assets we may need to clean up and, and fix whatever damage results from this, uh, what is now a hurricane. 
Uh, with that, I'd like to call on the weatherman, John Quirello of the National Weather Service. John. Thank you, Governor. Good afternoon. As the Governor mentioned, Florence is now a Category 1 hurricane. It's still moving slowly to the west, about six miles per hour. Uh, Florence will begin to rapidly strengthen, becoming a major hurricane by Monday evening. A turn to the northwest and an increase in forward speed uh, will then occur through the middle of the week. Florence is expected to approach the southeast coast as a major hurricane on Thursday. Uh, on this current track, the tropical storm force winds could arrive uh, across parts of the South Carolina coast by Thursday morning. And as the governor mentioned, uh, given the slower approach, that's just a little bit later than what we were expecting yesterday. While the official uh, forecast shows Florence making landfall across southeast North Carolina, it's still important to remember that the Cone of Uncertainty still covers the entire South Carolina coast, as the governor also mentioned, meaning that landfall along coastal South Carolina is still a possibility. Remember, the storm is still five days out, and changes to the track can and likely will occur. In addition, any impacts, including wind, heavy rainfall, and storm surge, will extend well away from the center of the storm. Florence is expected to slow or even stall over the Carolinas and mid-Atlantic region for at least several days after making landfall, and could result in significant flash flooding and eventually river flooding, depending on the track. So at this point, it's still important to continue preparations. And again, for more uh, hurricane safety tips and other resources from the Weather Service, you can go to weather.gov safety. Thank you. Let me mention one thing on that. On, on the, when you watch the national weather reports, as most of us have been doing for several days now, you remember those national reports are for, for a national audience. They're not, not tailor-made for South Carolina. What you're hearing from us is tailor-made for South Carolina, and we're going to more, more depth and more detail, and that's why when you see on the National Weather Reports, you see what would appear to be a, a cone or the hurricane seems to be drifting away. That, that's not a prediction. Uh, the prediction is, is fairly well represented by this cone, and again, it's uh, the outlying edges, that white line going around the outside, that is where the eye of the hurricane may be. Not the extent of the winds of the hurricane, that'll go up maybe 100 miles on either side, but the eye of the hurricane. So by this prediction here, the eye of the hurricane could come in down in Jasper County, or around, uh, around Savannah, or go all the way up to, uh, up to Maryland, or anywhere in between. So we don't know what's going to happen, but we know this. The, the official part of the state, the state response mechanism, is in gear and working and, and is ready, and we want all the people to, uh, to be smart and prepare for what could be a very hard blow to South Carolina. General Livingston. Thank you, Governor. Uh, based on the Governor's executive order and coordination with all of Team South Carolina, uh, almost 3,000 people are being prepositioned for contingencies throughout South Carolina. We've activated over 800 National Guardsmen uh, to support state operations, and we are coordinating with all of our neighbors. And to tell you how fluid this storm is, uh, we're talking to North Carolina. Uh, we're getting commitments of assets from them if something happens in South Carolina, and they're getting commitments from us for assets if something happens in North Carolina. So we're making contingency plans for the whole range of impact of the storm, and we will be prepared. I will emphasize what the governor said is the, your individual preparedness and your individual awareness. Uh, please make sure that you are prepared to evacuate if necessary. And uh, we will be providing, uh, the governor will be providing uh, timely information to allow you to execute those plans that you make uh, if something does happen. So you have to plan on that cone. And then as the situation develops, the uh, governor will officially notify you in time so that you can uh, make your moves. Uh, but we do appreciate the entire opera, uh, uh, cooperation of Team South Carolina, and that includes all the citizens of South Carolina. Thank you, Governor. Thanks, sir. Yes, sir. Kim Stenson, Director of uh, Emergency Management Division. Thank you, sir. Um, a couple updates. Uh, the State Emergency Operations Center, which we're at right now, is uh, operational with partial agency staffing state agency staffing and will remain for the at least the near term and will probably uh, ramp up the full staffing uh, tomorrow on Monday. Uh, response priorities right now uh, are evacuation planning, 
um, and execution to include sheltering if we have to uh, do any of that. And then also, we're also taking a look at the follow-on operations uh, potentially post-evacuation, and that would be the response and also uh, damage assessment. Um, the governor also already mentioned about the emergency declaration, uh, but our FEMA federal coordinating officer who will be in charge of FEMA assets once they arrive here in South Carolina will be here Monday, uh, also with an advanced team uh, to start the planning process uh, should, we, uh, should we have to evacuate. Um, in terms of the local authorities and the counties, we stay in contact uh, with them uh, at least twice a day uh, to make sure that we understand what their status is and whether or not they have any unmet needs. Uh, most of the county EOCs, the emergency operations centers, are being staffed to some extent today, and their primary focus is the same as ours. It's the possible evacuation and sheltering mission that we may have. Uh, we'll also uh, today are deploying some of our South Carolina Emergency Management Division personnel to the coastal counties, so they'll be embedded with the emergency operations center, uh, so we'll have better coordination and understanding and situational awareness on the ground down there. In terms of logistics, uh, and that's a lot of what we do here, uh, helping out the, the county's resource uh, uh, logistics, and we've got our contracts uh, for commodities, uh, general logistical uh, support, and also transport. And as General Livingston mentioned, uh, coordinating with other states for the possibility of receiving out-of-state assets uh, should we need them. And we're looking at uh, at least three areas right now, and that's incident management, uh, swift water rescue, and air support. In terms of public information, we continue to uh, emphasize the individual preparedness. We have an active social media campaign where we're pushing out information all the time. Uh, in terms of the personal preparedness, and the governor's already talked about the, uh, our, our uh, website and our uh, uh, hurricane guide, but also would like to mention our emergency manager uh, application that can be downloaded on your smartphone uh, that has almost all the information that's on our website. And very importantly, it has the Know Your Zone uh, module, which will allow you to type in your address if you live along the coast, and it will tell you which zone you're in or if you're not in a zone. So we invite everybody to look at that. Uh, and again, all those sources, the, the app, the uh, hurricane guide, and the website have lots of great information uh, to get each one of us prepared. So we ask that everybody be their own personal emergency manager. and. Uh, make a plan and make it personal and be ready for whatever happens. Thank you, sir. One question, you mentioned the zones. What, what are the different zones? What difference does that make to the average zones? Right. right uh, basically, most counties have more than one zone that they're divided up in, and depending on the category of the storm, uh, and it'll go further inland, obviously, if it's a stronger storm. So generally what we call the evacuation zone, the alphas, the, the A areas, are the ones that are located right along the coast. And then further inland, there's B zones, and then even further inland, there may be C zones. Uh, and it depends on the category of storm, uh, whether or not uh, you'd have to evacuate if that comes to pass. Mr. Simpson, how many members of that FEMA team that's arriving Monday do you know yet? Uh, I think they're probably somewhere in the 15 to 20 category, and that's an initial planning group, if you will, uh, that'll help us work specific areas, whether it's operations or logistics, and we just have them on the ground to do that planning. More questions? No, it doesn't, it doesn't look like a hurricane's coming out there, but one, one is. Governor, sure. for someone who is living inland who may not think this is such a big deal because the storm may weaken as it moves inland, what would you say to that? I'd say get ready because the, the winds on this one are, are predicted to be more powerful than they were on Hugo, which is the one that had some very powerful winds and that, that uh, went all the way through Columbia into Charlotte and knocked down all the big live oak trees in Charlotte. So I would say uh, prepare for the worst and, and hope for the best. But indications, as indicated earlier, is that the storm is moving very slowly, although the winds are getting faster and faster. As it goes over warmer and warmer water, it starts spinning more and more. And, but it's moving slowly, so that means it, it may be just parked here on top of us for, for longer than uh, we've had one here before. Often they'll just move right through. Well, this one's moving up very slow, and with those high winds, it could do a lot of damage. Just get prepared. Prepare for the worst, but hope for the best. Governor, are we thinking about reversing the lanes on the interstates? Can you We're considering all of those things. We're considering everything from A to Z on how to keep the people and property safe. And we'll be making the appropriate announcements at the appropriate time with plenty of lead time and notice in advance. 
and our team has been in contact with the rest of the team all around the state and particularly in hospitals and nursing homes and other things that require a little bit more advance notice but uh, there's constant communication among the entire network. Governor, is there a fixed timeline right now at this time? You could say sometime this week when evacuations no. would be looked at? No, sir. Well, we're looking at it all the time. We're studying the, what information we have, and things have changed a little bit from this time yesterday till now, and they'll probably change some more uh, tomorrow. But we are constantly, constantly reviewing, analyzing the information to determine what the best course of action is. Of course, you know, people asking Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Can't you we, can't say it right really, now. Really can't say now. Don't, don't want to say it. We don't want to, don't want to be in error. But uh, I would say li listen to what, what we say and, and uh, watch your television and go, go to these websites and there's plenty of information there. And when there's, when there's an announcement to make, you can be assured we'll um, announce it in plenty of time to give everyone plenty of, of notice. And we've got a really a great team working on this, so we expect to be very reliable for the people of this state. Again, can we repeat the number of activated personnel in place to deal General. with those contingency plans and the National Guardsmen? Uh, right now we have about 800 National Guardsmen activated, uh, but then we also have uh, almost 3,000 uh, DOT and uh, police uh, uh, personnel from the uh, SLED, Department of Natural Resources, Highway Patrol that are moving to the coast to uh, prepare for contingencies. Now we have plenty of reserve. We got uh, uh, another 9,000 National Guardsmen we can uh, activate. We have people from neighboring states, uh, but right now we don't need those people. And we will activate as we need. Uh, as, as Governor says, we have internal plans. Uh, we just have to see the start point, and the start point is dependent on the, on the storm, and Florence doesn't want to tell us everything yet. Excellent. Any more questions? Well, stay tuned and thank you very much.